Hello and welcome to Showcase, Charity World's daily arts and culture show, coming to you from our studios in Istanbul. On this episode, we'll check out the works of a lawyer-turned-artist that merges Lego with superheroes. Actor Tom Cruise makes a comeback with the latest addition to the Mission Impossible franchise, and we'll dive into the virtual world of Harry Potter's Hogwarts. But first... We look at the Chinese film industry's answer to Hollywood. An artistic haven at the Village of Arts in Senegal. Senegal may have traditionally been known for its agriculture, but now it's starting to become recognized for its art scene. And there's one place that's turned into a bit of a breeding ground for artistic talent. So we sent our Miranda Addy to check it out. Her destination, the aptly named Village of Arts. This picturesque 40,000 square metre land is cited as Senegal's cultural masterpiece. It showcases the country's best in art, from modern to traditional. The Village of Arts in Dakar is a unique proposition. Founded more than 20 years ago, it's run by a committee of resident artists and supported by the Senegalese Ministry of Culture. With around 52 studios, a bronze foundry, multiple residencies and a gallery, it really is a haven for creativity. Each artist has their own space and their own speciality. Bubu Ndaye is a potter. He joined the Village of Arts this year as he needed somewhere to prepare for Senegal's Dakar Biennale, one of Africa's biggest art events, which opens this week. The Village of Arts is special because it is the first village of this kind here in Senegal. It's a big village with a group of all sorts of artists, African artists and the most important artists in Senegal but also other African artists are here. It's very important for new artists. One man who knows the impact of the village is Dauda Ndaye. A committee member, he's been involved with the project since it began and has always had a studio here. Dauda's the definition of a multimedia artist. He was trained as a painter, but now works with everything from recycled plastic bottles to glass. Every month of the year, every day of the year, there are activities at the Village of Arts. There's creation, there's demand. We even have studios for foreign artists who come here for a residence or exchange with Senegalese artists. So this is a unique platform of its kind. In a country like Senegal, which still struggles with poverty and youth unemployment, a ministry-supported artistic program like this one is unusual. It attracts tourists from all over the world, and some homegrown ones too. Um, we have um, a lot of young people um, that want to do something with their life, that tries to find meanings and ways to get out of poverty by using art and by expressing, expressing themselves differently. So I think um, a space like this um, should be the list they should ask or, or get from, from, um, from that talent and that energy. The Village of Arts is a place for experimentation. The 52 studios are totally different when it comes to genre, style or form, but somehow each artist's space coexists perfectly with the others and gives a real sense of the diversity of art coming out of Senegal. Miranda Atti, TRT World, Dakar, Senegal. It's no secret that the world's top film investors are competing to gain a foothold within the Chinese movie market. While some foreign producers try to penetrate the East Asian country by using it as a movie setting, others do their best to find deals to help import their in-the-can celluloid products for exhibition there. But to keep the unique national voice of Chinese cinema,
Conglomerate giant Dalian Wanda Group has launched the world's biggest studio in the city of Qingdao. And now all eyes have turned towards this movie backlot called the Oriental Movie Metropolis. Here's our story. Beginning in the 1970s and all through the 80s, Chinese independent movie studios invaded the screens of Hollywood with local productions heavy on action and adventure. Despite lacking high rolling backers, these films managed to take the first step in providing the basis for cinematic cultural dialogue. There's nowhere to hide. Recent years saw a reversal in roles. Due to its huge profit potential, major Hollywood studios are now courting the Chinese movie going public, and mega budget Tinseltown blockbusters flood the local movie theatres. In a move to get the upper hand over their Western counterparts, the world's largest cinema chain operator, The Wonder Group, decided to bring the work model of major Hollywood studios to China. The Oriental movie Metropolis Backlot aims to put the local movie community back on the map. And the chairman of The Wonder Group believes the $8 billion media platform established across 400 acres as the next natural step in the evolution of the Chinese film industry. Oriental movie metropolis in Qingdao is a milestone for the industrialization of the Chinese film business. It's filled an important gap in Chinese film history. It will boost the development of the industry and will push Chinese film to the world stage. The studio has changed the status of Qingdao as a city and has made it a pillar of local economic development. And according to the president of the studio, the metropolis will eventually become an international hub for foreign filmmakers. I believe that our conditions here will be more qualified, including our software and hardware. More production teams from abroad will soon be visiting, and Hollywood will eventually come to China to make films. Reports now suggest that following in the footsteps of Hollywood blockbuster Pacific Rim Uprising, six more Tinseltown projects are expected to be shot at the premises. For more on East Asia's biggest movie complex, the Qindao Movie Metropolis, I'm joined from Hong Kong by cultural critic Vivian Chow. She is an award-winning journalist who specializes in arts and cultural politics. Thank you so much for joining me today, Vivian. Now, how important is it to have a complex that could possibly rival Hollywood in East Asia? I think this is really, it's, 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 it's a very symbolic move for um, China to have such a complex. Um, it's, it's not just another studio that we are talking about, but it's a huge studio that, that runs um, 166 hectares and it has um, 30, more than 30 sound stages already up and running, and also a, a bunch of facilities that will facilitate the filming of um, uh, shooting and also the crew and also all, all the post-production post facilities. So it's extremely important um, to have such kind of facilities available here in Asia. And to whether this, but then whether this studio um, is going to take off as um, uh, as a major arrival to Hollywood, it really depends on what kind of productions will take place here at this um, particular studio. Well, the executive CEO of the studio has said that they're fully booked through the second half of 2018. And earlier you said that they are offering a huge soundstage. What are some other services that they're offering to movie makers at this complex? Um, I think one of the huge attractions um, with this um, studio complex is the rebate system. So basically, um, if you uh, have your films um, produced there, then um, there is this um, government supported rebate system that allows film producers to get a rebate from the government fund. And um, it can go up to at least, uh, it can go up to 40% of the production cost. So say for example, um, The Great Wall um, that was directed by Zhang Yimou and it starred um, Matt Damon and Lau, so it had um, 60 million yuan uh, rebate um, going back to the production, and then the next one will be a Pacific Rim. Um, so that is actually a huge attraction for any production, not just locally, but also from abroad, to have the production taking place at that massive mega studio. 
Well, it seems like this complex has been created for more bigger productions. But will smaller production companies or, let's say, indie filmmakers have a chance to use the movie Metropolis as well? I think the studios will be open to all um, as long as they can pay for the services. But um, usually for um, productions that can afford using this kind of this kind of facilities would usually be big productions, like blockbuster type of productions. Um, for indie productions, um, I'm sure they would be open to that as long as well it helped the business. But then the truth is, uh, do indie productions really need such kind of facilities? Because a lot of independent films, uh, it's not just about the budget, but they don't really need to build a set. They might be, um, they, will, they will probably be in, uh, more on location shooting involved or they would um, do, uh, they, they would have like um, a, a smaller scale of kind of um, set um, design instead of a mega um, set um, that needs to be built. So they might not need it. But then this, um, um, the Wanda Studios also offer post-production facilities, which could be beneficial to small production when they need to um, get their films um, during the post-production stage or, um, um, to adjust the color tone of the of, of the um, of the images and also maybe sound mixing. So there could be some other facilities that would be beneficial to smaller independent production. Cultural critic Vivian Chow, thank you so much for joining me there from Hong Kong. Still to come on Showcase, when the law and Lego collide. Meet the attorney-turned-artist who's building his own superheroes. You had a terrible choice to make in Berlin. One life over millions. Agent Ethan Hunt chooses to accept yet another impossible mission. We're fans of Harry Potter and we wanted to bring uh, an experience to fans and meet their expectations on being able to go to Hogwarts. From books to films to Broadway, and now there's an app for that. But before bringing you those, let's check out other stories that are making headlines in the global art scene. Swedish pop group ABBA say they've recorded their first new songs since the 80s, but they've told fans not to expect any live performances as they have no plans to appear together. The new songs will be performed by computer-generated avatars. In 2000, the four reportedly turned down a $1 billion offer to tour together. But even this virtual reunion is somewhat of a surprise for fans as the group split in 1982 after the two couples divorced. I've observed up close. I worked with her. I've now lived with her for 34 years. Uh, she's just extraordinary. She always is able to keep her dignity, when I say not dignity, not standoffish, uh, the, the dignity of the character she's playing. She he added that a less talented actress might have gone too over the top, but that Mirren has a unique ability to humanize the characters she plays. A Picasso painting bought by 25,000 online buyers has been exhibited for the first time in Geneva. The idea was to bring art to the community, both a community of owners and the wider community, meaning nobody really owns it and everyone can enjoy it. A sense of all for one and one for all. The reason that Empest is needed at this point is because of um, Islamophobia, because the representation of Muslims is focused so much on extremism and terrorism, and the festival allows us to look at the rich cultural diversity of Muslim communities, um, their literature, their art, their poetry, and really celebrate that diversity and that culture. The festival is being held at the British Library in London, and organizers hope it will encourage a positive exchange of ideas. Tired of Wall Street, American lawyer Nathan Sawaya turned to Lego and built a new life as an artist. So far, some of his brick sculptures feature the Statue of Liberty, a horror villain, and a couple of famous paintings.
But with his latest series, he's built his way into the world of superheroes. Let's find out more. It's a chance to see our favorite superheroes combined with one of our favorite childhood toys. These Lego sculptures by American artist Nathan Sawyer are on display in Paris as part of an exhibition called Art of the Brick. A piece like this, Superman here, uh, took about two weeks to create. I'm in my Los Angeles studio where I have millions of bricks and I'll design something by sketching it out, getting that idea, and then brick by brick I put it together. I'm actually gluing each little brick together so that when I travel with these sculptures all over the world, they arrive in one piece. This more than five meter long Batmobile is the largest sculpture in the show and was shaped with half a million bricks. That's not all. Sawyer also recreated vintage covers of DC favorites, such as Flash and the Green Lantern. But before he found his true passion, Sawyer was doing something completely different. I wanted to do something that made me happy. I wasn't happy as a lawyer, and creating art made me happy. And using Lego bricks made the art very accessible, so everyone could connect with this art, because everyone snapped a few bricks together. And so I just decided to leave the law firm behind and be a full-time artist that plays with toys. And it's paying off. The award-winning artist has already toured Sydney, London and Rome with varying themes, but he sure has more surprises planned for the future. Espionage is a film genre that's considered guaranteed success at the box office. And each movie studio has capitalized on this by launching its own successful spy franchise. But every now and then, fans do protest that their favorite series get diluted by so many sequels. The latest Mission Impossible film aims to defy that. Let's see how. From the very beginning, Paramount Pictures' Mission Impossible franchise set itself apart from its contemporaries by recruiting directors and talent critics have described as visionaries. And the investment in these artists have paid off, as the series gained acclaim for being both groundbreaking and entertaining. Very. Well, this is not mission difficult, Mr. Hunt, it's mission impossible. You had a terrible choice to make in Berlin. One life over millions. A covert mission that goes awry is the centerpiece of Fallout. As a result, actor Tom Cruise has become the brand face for the Mission Impossible Force, finds himself antagonized by new enemies and former allies. You need to walk away. Please don't make me go through you. In this latest installment, the creative minds behind the IMF decided to add new blood to the roster. In one such addition is actor Henry Cavill of Superman fame. The British performer says he found the whole experience eye-opening. Tom and Chris McQuarrie both, they have a remarkable, they're a remarkable resource for knowledge. They have lots of experience and for me it was a real pleasure being on set with them, aside from obviously working with them, but just to sit there and quiz them, ask them any question I wanted and they would answer, honestly, straight away. And I got to learn an awful lot about the filmmaking process, about the storytelling process, which I haven't had the opportunity to learn. This is the CIA's mission. Fellow newcomer Angela Bassett says MI Fallout finally brings diversity to a genre that has, until now, been dominated by males. It's nice to be, uh, you know, sit in that seat and be, you know, con considered able, you know, intellectually, you know, the choices that she's going to have to make to come to that position, because it's a position that's usually held mm, with such a tight grip by men. Mm -hmm. So the fact to have a woman in that position and uh, to have a woman of color in that position, I think, has been pretty, pretty amazing. I think it's, it's, it's a great look. How is he? Oh, you know. Same old Ethan. At this year's CinemaCon event, the makers of the film also tease that Fallout will feature some of the freshest and most daring action stunts and visuals in film history.
It all started with a series of books about an orphan in a magical world. Then came huge movie adaptations, as well as smash hit companion books. Harry Potter recently walked onto the stage with the theater play The Cursed Child and took fandom back in time with Fantastic Beasts. But the franchise hasn't stopped there. It has now ventured into the world of games. Your letter has arrived. An exciting adventure is about to begin. Now all Potterheads can go to Hogwarts. On their phones and tablets, that is. We'll define your Hogwarts story. Hogwarts Mysteries, a new role-playing game which opens the door to the School of Witchcraft and Wizardry from Harry Potter. You download the app, create your character, quite possibly yourself, and start your first year at Hogwarts. The best part about the game and my favorite part is the fact that you get to make the choices. So you actually choose which house you want to be in. We know that fans know in their heart of hearts what house they belong in. We want to provide that, that choice to them. So the first iconic choice that you make in this game is what house you want to be in. So you can choose to be a Gryffindor, a Ravenclaw, a Hufflepuff, or a Slytherin. And that choice has implications in the storyline as you go to the common room, as you meet Rowan, your new best friend. Um, and as you interact with other students. It's set in the 80s. Harry is born, but not old enough to be your best friend and classmate. You get to practice magic, attend your favorite professor's classes, and wander around the castle. Besides the thrill of being finally involved with the magical world, there's also a mystery to be solved. Your character needs to find a missing brother. At Hogwarts, which is an ever-changing environment, there's new hallways, there's classrooms, there's doors, there's staircases, and while you're trying to figure out the quests and trying to complete those, um, I would recommend everyone to slow down, use the robust navigation system that we have in the game to explore the hallways. You might see a house elf who, if you tap on, they'll animate and they'll turn, you know, they'll have something to do. Or the paintings on the walls, they'll, they're also animated. So I would just encourage everyone to tap and explore Hogwarts. Our content creators are always making new content, so you'll never run out of anything to play through. The other surprise is that the actors who played Professors Dumbledore, McGonagall and Flitwick have lent their voices to the app. So you hear them when you attend the class. Congratulations. We are pleased to inform you that you have been accepted at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. The creators of the app say there will be more updates to the game in the near future. Please find enclosed a list of all necessary books and equipment. And that's it on Showcase for now. Head to our YouTube channel for more from the world of arts and culture. But before we sign off, it's the birthday of one of the top auteur directors to emerge in the last 20 years. Among today's filmmakers, Wes Anderson's artistic style and visual storytelling is one of the most consistent and easily recognizable. So here are the top five telltale signs that will remind you that you're watching a Wes Anderson movie. I'm Efnan Han. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now. And so it begins. I don't think I can stomach any more of this garbage. Exactly. Same right. here. Words out of my mouth. Here, put these bandit hats on. I don't have a bandit hat, but I modified this tube sock. They look good. Yeah.
cars with a special rabbit ear on the top so we could pipe in some music. Is that my belt? Can I borrow it? <laughs> 